Hello and welcome to photowalkthrough.com. This is tutorial 4, chapter 1. OK, today I'm looking at the image you can see here on the screen. This is a picture I took at um, Carter's Steam Fair this weekend. We went to visit some friends and uh, while we were there we just chanced on this uh, really charming little fairground which had all sorts of uh, traditional fairground rides all beautifully painted, beautifully looked after and uh, the two people you can see on the swings here are uh, uh, the lady is my wife Ruth and the gentleman is uh, our good friend Richard um, I prefer to stay on the ground and take photos um, which is something else I should mention because uh, the reason I have my camera with me is that I'm carrying it around everywhere at the moment um, I just picked up a Canon 5D and I can't help but rave at you about how wonderful it is so um, uh, I've got the camera with me wherever I go at the moment and it just so happened that I, I had it here for this shot um, so uh, some of you may have noticed that this is not the picture that's shown on the home page of the photowalkthrough.com uh, website I have a little voting tool there where I show you a couple of images that I might do a tutorial about and I ask you to vote on which one you'd like to see done um, uh, as I said before it's my plan to to do a tutorial uh, on the image that you guys choose and then a tutorial on the image that I've chosen uh, because there are certain things that I want to show that aren't necessarily uh, found in some of those other images that, I, that I'm showing you so um, in this case uh, there's a couple of bits of this tutorial that I wanted to show you in particular uh, and I also wanted to show off some of the pictures from my new camera so um, so that's why we're doing this, this tutorial uh, this week um, we will do the um, the next one that you're voting for on the home page next time uh, I suspect that that's going to it looks like it's going to turn out to be the high dynamic range uh, nighttime shot I took uh, from Belper um, and that will be the tutorial that will be tutorial 5 so um, before I get started I also wanted to just bring up uh, podcast alley and Yahoo podcasts um, you've probably heard this before on many many other uh, podcasts um, the podcast uh, presenter begging you to vote for them on Podcast Alley um, I'm just the same, I'd love, you, love it if you voted for me on Podcast Alley um, it does generate some hits on the site, it does get people uh, seeing what we're doing here and the more people view it uh, the more useful it will be, the more interesting it will be the more time I can spend on it so uh, please do consider voting for us on Podcast Alley, there is a link on the photowalkthrough.com homepage where you can just enter your email address and um, that votes for that submits your vote for us um, as far as I'm aware they don't put you on any spam, spam list I've voted many many times and I've never had any spam from it so it should be safe to give your email address there um, and also Yahoo have a voting tool which I've also got on the homepage of the site so if you'd consider just uh, voting for us and if you wanted to write a couple of words that'd be great and you can also, if you wanted to, do a review, review for us on the iTunes Music Store. That would be lovely too. Um, the other thing uh, that I'm promoting at the moment is, would you consider, if you've produced any images as a result of watching the tutorials here, or if you've just got any images that you're particularly proud of, um, I'd love it if you posted those in the Flickr group. We've got a, a Flickr group called Photo Walkthrough. Uh, which all photowalkthrough.com listeners are, are encouraged to join um, I'd really like to encourage some sort of system of critique between uh, what I do, what you do, uh, and critique each, each other I think the thing that's most improved my own photography is not just receiving critique on the pictures I've uh, produced but actually I think more valuable is giving critique giving critique forces you to think about what it is you like about what you're looking at it forces you to decide what decisions um, were the right ones when you were composing a picture, post-processing a picture, what is it you like, what is it you don't like uh, and those are the things that when you come to actually hold the camera up to your eye um, the more you critique other people the more you will find yourself doing the same when you pick the camera up and take your own photographs so I'm really keen on encouraging critique and with that in mind I'm actually planning to do a couple of special shows um, these will not replace our regular Monday morning shows uh, these will probably be launched on Thursdays um, and they won't happen every week but I'll do occasional special shows on Thursdays where I'm planning to uh, with the with your permission uh, show off some of your work I would love it if you posted some pictures on the Flickr group um, let me know which ones you're happy with me putting on a show and I'll do a quick video tutor video uh, show on Thursdays where I perhaps go through some of the listeners pictures and, and it 
with your permission again I'll do a little critique on those. Um, it would be great if I could tie them to one of the tutorials we've done. I'm putting together a, a show at the moment with um, some cross-processed images based on tutorial 2, the cabin door image. Um, there were loads of great responses to that. Lots of people have produced their own work based on those pictures. Um, so I would like to do a, little, a short show critiquing those. Um, I've already emailed a couple of you asking for, for permission. If any of, you, any of the rest of you have got some work that you'd like to uh, be considered to include there, that would be great. Um, and uh, right, moving on to this picture, of course, um, I'm in the habit now of putting the source files for these tutorials on the photowalkthrough.com website. Um, every tutorial that I produce, um, although it's in multiple chapters, the whole tutorial has a page on the photowalkthrough.com site. Uh, if you go to the site and look at the bottom of the list of chapters, you will find links to the source files. So if you want to follow along on your own computer, um, these should all work on Mac and PC, um, and possibly even uh, with a little bit of translation on Photoshop Elements. So you're welcome to download the source files. Uh, today I've included a couple of um, Camera Raw files, so they're quite large, but um, uh, you're welcome to take these uh, as they came out of my camera um, and you can follow along step by step or even produce your own version of them. I'd love to see what you do. Um, so uh, I've mentioned that we found this, this particular uh, steam fair. Uh, well, I was visiting Swindon, visiting our friends Janine and Richard in Swindon and while we were out shopping there was this little steam fair out the back. I took a series of photographs and in particular um, when Ruth and Richard got on this ride they were the only two people on the ride and it was just too good an opportunity not to photograph it so I've taken a whole series of photographs of these two uh, on the ride here um, this happened to be my favourite and I'll explain in a little bit why but I thought I'd start the tutorial today just by showing you uh, the very first part of my process so if I just close this uh, where's the close button there it is right and then I'm going to go back to Adobe Bridge. Um, uh, I've just pared down the list here. I actually shot a lot more than this, but I've, I've just pared it down to the the ones that were of this particular ride, which is called a Cheroplane, and um, uh, and Ruth and Richard flying around on it. And as you can see, all of the pictures here have uh, Ruth and Richard sort of on this particular side. This was where the sunlight was falling. Um, I I stood and looked at where the light was. I stood and looked at the way the swings were flying. I decided where to stand and all my pictures here were taken from that position and you can see I tried a couple of different zooms, I tried a couple of different uh, or I tried a different orientation of the camera, just tried a few different things to try and make sure that I got uh, at least one shot that I'm happy with and I'm happy to say that they, they were all reasonably good um, and in actual fact what, what I've done with the final image is combine two of them um, but there were two in particular that I was very happy with. So the first thing I would normally do when I take these photographs off my camera, is I would uh, pop them into. Uh, I, I just copy them off the off the off the card directly onto my PC using, um, in my case, Windows Explorer. I don't use um, the uh, import tools from from any of these products. I just copy them into a folder, and then I go into Bridge and browse to that folder using the Folders tab on the left here. Um, so here's the. Uh, the eight images that were appropriate from this particular shoot um, and within Adobe Bridge um, there's this wonderful workspace capability this is also in Photoshop as well um, and I have um, a score images workspace set up but basically um, Bridge comes with a with its own uh, light box mode which looks like this um, and that just makes all the other palettes go away apart from the images themselves and then you've got this button down here at the bottom which is film strip view which changes you to this mode, uh, which is extremely useful. Um, and if you compare that with my own score images layout, it's identical. You'll see. Um, now uh, we've got obviously we've got a large version of the image here, so we can see what the image is looking like. Um, I'm working at 800 by 600, so the detail's not there. Normally I work in 1280 by 1024. I get loads of detail here, and I can make a reasonably good judgment of, of how good the uh, the image is just from this view. Um, and what I do is, starting at the top, um, you can use your, your up and down cursor keys to go forwards and backwards through the images. And you've probably seen this before, but you can score the images by clicking here. How many stars do we want to give each image? I've just accidentally opened it up in Camera Raw. Cancel that and go back to Bridge. Sorry about that. Um, 
you can score the image here just by clicking the number of stars you want to give it. Um, so what I would do is just with the keyboard, I would start at the top one and I'd say that first image, I was trying to capture Ruth and Richard here. This is this is just sort of family and friends shot really. Um, it's not a bad shot, it's not great. Um, so I'd give that two stars. This one, uh, Ruth smiling, looking pretty happy with herself. That's probably a three stars. Still not, a, still not great compositionally. Can't really see what they're riding on. So I started to zoom out a little bit, started to get more of the, uh, the ride itself in. Um, not a bad shot, probably a three star. Um, they're both looking in the same direction there, which is pretty good. This one, they're not looking in the same direction, so I, I don't like that one quite as much. That's a two star. Um, that one is excellent. They're both looking at me. They're both looking pretty happy. That one's a five star for me. And this one here uh, is the one that I most like, and I'll tell you for why. It's because um, I've got the whole scene in. I've got Ruth and Richard in one corner. I've got the whole ride in another corner. And the thing in particular that I like about it, I've got all these lines radiating out from the centre. And it's a shame that I only spotted this towards the end of shooting this this particular scene, because uh, I would love to have taken more like this. Uh, it, it occurred to me that there's a there's a whole circles thing here and radiating lines going on, um, which is what I ended up wanting to make the picture about. So. Uh, this one is the one that I decided to work on most, and it, it's not ideal. Uh, Ruth is looking in one direction, Richard is looking in another, in another direction. Um, there's something I can do about that. I've got enough shots similar that I can take a different face off Richard and paste it in here and make the shot look better. But basically that, I think, is, is my source shot that, I, that I'm working on. It's not a five, it's a four, because Richard's not looking the right way. Moving down, that one's not bad. Richard's looking in a pretty good direction, and it's a similar sort of angle to the previous one. That one's probably a three. And that one there, uh, it wasn't a bad idea, but it was just too much brightness down here, too much uh, other stuff cluttering up the picture. Um, I, I stick to the mantra that you've probably heard before, reduce and simplify. And this is not as simple uh, an image as this. The, the two of them against the blue sky is a much nicer, simpler view than and this one. So that one for me is a one. Um, now typically what I do is if I've got images that I don't like and I've deleted the ones that I don't like now, um, I don't score them at all. I don't give them any stars at all. Um, and when I've finished going through them all, I use the filter up here and I say show unrated items only, which if I do that now you'll see there aren't any. That's because I've already deleted the, the ones I didn't like. But if there were some, let me, let me um, go back and that last image there if I give it no rating, if I do show unrated items only, and then I'll go back to just the icons view, which is that button there. Um, this is now only showing me the items that have got no score. Uh, at this point, I would actually go back and delete the items, uh, delete the photos that I didn't like. Um, as I say, I've already actually gone back and done that, which is why I'm not seeing them. So I scored that as a one, and it's vanished off that filtered view. Um, and the other thing that's useful to do, uh, I sometimes score images with a 1 if I want to keep them but I've no plans on including them in the collection. So that's a good example of one that I, I would score as a 1. A few of these others actually now are scored as 1s in my real version of this folder, but um, it's useful to be able to say, show me all the three, three or more star images. And this is how I sort of settle down upon building a collection of images, uh, which is the next thing I want to talk about actually. I want to talk about um, not just shooting a single shot. A single shot can be really powerful. It can be really uh, uh, sort of an instructive, uh, instructional thing to do to, to make one really great shot that includes everything you want to show. But actually, I think it's a lot more interesting from a viewer's point of view to come at a collection of pictures that describe an entire, maybe an entire day or an entire place or an entire scene or a story. Um, but in this case, for example, um, I've got a, a collection of shots that I took all on the same on the same day, all of this fun fair, um, and you can see that the the whole collection that I chose 13 images in the end out of uh, 72 that I took on the day, um, and uh, I, I I like the fact that you've got a, a collection that shows you aspects of the place, shows you different elements of what I saw that day, and. Um, uh, another thing that I think is important about a collection is to tell people what it is you were doing, what, where it is you took the photographs, what, why you liked the particular scene, what are you trying to show them. I think it's a lot more interesting to look at a photograph with some descriptive text than 
to look at just a photograph um, a photograph on its own if you if you really want to make it a sort of a, a journey for somebody to figure it out like a puzzle that's great um, I think it's a lot more useful to give people some cues some some ideas of how to look at a picture so um, so I, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of collections of images I'm a big fan of um, having a consistent style between those images um, and the images that you see in this particular collection uh, by the way I'll put a link in the show notes to the uh, the collection on Flickr of all the uh, the fun fair pictures that I took that day um, because it's a fun fair um, making it colorful was was a real no-brainer uh, I, I I wanted to push it um, as I quite often do I wanted to push it to an extreme and make these almost false looking I, I've gone for very strong contrasts very very bright colors and um, you know heavy vignettes heavy um, uh, brightening brightening areas that were in shade uh, it was quite a bright sunny day there are heavy contrasts in these pictures already um, so I try and lighten areas that are in shade and just really punch everything right up so that it just skirts the line between real and false um, so I, I hope you'll agree that's what I've done <laughs> by all means let me know if you don't think I have um, but that's that's my intent for the entire collection. I want the entire collection to have a consistent style, um, and as I say, I keep I, I put as much descriptive text with an image as I can. I want you to know why, why I was there, what what I was looking at, what interested me, um, and give you maybe some sort of idea of of how to approach the the image or the collection. So that's um, that's scoring the images. Um, moving on to uh, the next step, which I'm going to cover really quickly, uh, raw conversion. Uh, you can just double click on these raw files and it'll open them in the raw converter in Photoshop uh, I tend to do it here in the bridge but in this particular case I'm just going to work on one image and it, it makes no difference which way you do it so I'm right clicking and choosing opening camera raw and if you've watched one of my previous videos you'll know that the camera raw dialog is much bigger than my screen because I'm working at 800 by 600 so uh, I'm sorry you can't see the entire window here Th this is this is the camera raw dialog and by default it's got these two shadows and highlights tick boxes turned on um, if they're not turned on I recommend that you do the highlights are showing in red the bits that are overexposed and the shadows are showing in bl blue the bits that are underexposed so if I just drag this window across so that you can see the controls here on the right um, if I was to turn on all these auto tick boxes it does a pretty good job actually usually this is a pretty good job um, in this case we're seeing a lot of overexposure here on the front of the ride and a little on the face now I can live with it on the ride where it's highlights and specular highlights where the Sun's reflecting off things I can't live with it on faces so I'm going to just click on the word exposure and drag down using those scrubby sliders again and I think about there that all the red dots have gone off the faces they're still a little up here but I can live with that um, now looking at the shadows I'm just, I'm just going down these one at a time I'm seeing a bit of a spike at the bottom here of the histogram so it might be that I can just drag those shadows down a little bit bring a little bit of the shadow detail back um, it's, it's gone a little bit dark on this image now so um, the brightness wasn't bad from the auto correction but I'll just drag that up just a little bit more and the contrast the the auto tick box here quite often adds quite a lot of contrast to images I think it overdoes it I prefer to add contrast in Photoshop where I've got more control um, so I'm going to just drag that down a little bit because this is such bright uh, sunlight and shadows in this image I want to give myself as much information in Photoshop as I can and I will I will make use of the information and maybe maybe throw some of it away by adding strong contrast curves but I'd rather do it where I've got more control in Photoshop than do it here in in the raw converter um, it is possible to do quite a lot of this in the raw converter but you've really got to know right from the start what you what you're going to do what layers you're going to add in Photoshop um, and for me it's more of a uh, an exploratory process taking the picture into Photoshop and finding out what works finding out what doesn't work so I've dragged the contrast down we've got rid of almost all of the blue dots for the underexposed shadow areas we've got rid of almost all of the red dots for the um, overexposed highlight areas I've got an image that looks sort of nicely uh, mid-toned I've got reasonable colors in there uh, I've got reasonable detail everywhere at that point I would just hit the open button which uh, I can't quite drag into shot because it's off the bottom of my screen but uh, trust me when I tell you that just off the bottom here is an open button and I'm just going to click that 
and that will open that image in I'll open my image in Photoshop, which if we give it a moment, should appear. Now, um, perhaps annoyingly, I'm not actually going to do any work in Photoshop on this tutorial today. I'm going to start work on this in the next tutorial. But just before I go, um, I would just like to, to go through a process that I don't think I've gone through with you in the tutorial before. I'm looking at the picture in Photoshop um, and making some decisions about what it is I'm going to try. Um, and the first thing that um, I've already mentioned, in fact, is that this this guy's head here is looking in the wrong direction. It just it doesn't quite fit with. I wanted them to look like they were enjoying the ride. I wanted to so looking forward, going around, and in fact, I'm I'm already using some of the words that I want to reflect in the image. I want I want uh, motion in the image. I want uh, circles in the image. I'm seeing a big circle here. I'm seeing lots of radiant lines out from the center of the circle so I'm thinking I'll probably add some sort of vignette just to enclose the thing and to emphasize the circles and I want his face looking more as though he's going forwards more as though he's going around um, so one of the things I'll do in the next video is I will find a head from a different picture and I'll paste it in here over the top um, what else I've got bright sunlight uh, we've got some pretty shadowy areas on the bottom of this bit of the right here um, and also we've got some quite bright areas along the bottom of the image um, so I'll probably work on correcting some of that um, just just really going around the the image looking for things that need correcting um, looking for things that, that I'm going to try and achieve in Photoshop um, really you know, I, I spend a lot of time working on these photo, these images in Photoshop. I'd be a lot happier if I spent no time at all. So I don't want to spend a lot of time experimenting with things that might work and don't and throwing them away. And So I think a little bit of time spent up front deciding what it is you're trying to do, what it is that interests you, what it is that's important about this image, um, I think can save you a lot of time and effort later on. Um, and also, interestingly, um, this, this image was shot at... Uh, one thousandth of a second, which uh, when I shot it, I thought thousandth of a second, no problem, it's going to be beautifully sharp. But just look here, I'll just look at the the tips of his the tips of his shoes. We've got just a little bit of motion blur, and it really shows up here on this. This was really quite close to me. Um, I shot this image with a, a 1740 lens, right zoomed right out at the 17, 17 mil end and it's on a 5D anyway, which is a 35 mil frame. So this is a very very wide shot. So um, although you can see a lot, I was actually very close. Um, these guys' feet were going over my head, sort of, uh, I don't know, three or four feet above my head. Um, so even though it was shot at a thousandth of a second, do not underestimate um, motion blur. Motion blur can can be visible even at very fast shutter speeds. So uh, ideally, I would have gone uh, a little a little faster shutter speed. I didn't expect to get motion blur on this shot, but actually, I'm pretty happy that I did now uh, because. As it turns out, now I look at the image, motion is a big part of what I'm trying to show here. So getting these two in focus and getting a sense of motion in the ride is actually uh, ideal. Um, but it wasn't by design, it was by chance. So um, I've, got the, I've got the face looking the right way. Uh, I've got the bright sunlight covered. I've got the bright areas at the bottom I'm going to address. Um, I've got the motion is what I'm going to try and show. I'm going to try and show the circles. I think I've, I've got a plan now. And in the next video, I'm going to come back and I'm going to execute the plan uh, and show you how I've achieved all those things within the final image. Um, I will see you next week for that video. Uh, don't forget, if you've got any images that you'd like to show me, that you'd like to show the other viewers and listeners of the show, please do post them on the Flickr group. And if you've got a few spare moments, please consider voting for us on Podcast Alley. I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot.